Welcome back, Tara. We missed you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. That's OK. It's been a it's been a bad couple weeks, but um, but I'm back. OK, we missed you. We're glad you're back. I'm glad I'm back, too. So, um, I think that, the, oh, yeah, I've been watching Supernatural. Did you hear? I did. And here's the thing. You kind of got to just overlook when Dean says stupid shit. <laughs> Because it's not like it's like the writers have some really messed up gender ideas. Like women are either Virgin Mary mothers or sexy, evil whores. There's very little in between. And uh, um, what about the the uh, well, no, the, the bartender's kind of a mom. Yeah. And her daughter is kind of. Somewhere between a mom and a, and a yeah. baby sister. Yeah. Women are either to be revered and protected or murdered horribly. Yeah, we just had that one episode with the we with introducing Castiel and the eyes. And I'm like, that chick is like, she's just throwing it at everybody. OK, she's mur- she's like on fire now. And she was great. I loved her. Yeah. Uh, and the thing about Dean, he's kind of like. Your grandpa that still uses really racist terms isn't actually racist. You know, like still says colored folk and stuff, but, it, you know, isn't actually racist. Because he's an it's idiot. Really offensive shit because he kind of doesn't know any better. Because he's an idiot. And that's kind of that's kind of Dean. Like most he's an idiot. Well, but he does stupid shit sometimes and it becomes part of his charm. <laughs> he's an idiot. I love Dean Winchester, even though he is an idiot. Sam, on the other hand, is an arrogant douche and deserves nothing but pain and suffering. Yeah. Tonight, I think I, I, I was looking over our stories and I think what best sums these up is this is why we can't have nice things. I think pretty much sums up. Isn't, that, isn't that every week's theme? No, this one really is. I think it. Yeah, that I'll, you know what we're going to I'm going to lead with the one that embodies it the best. Because holy McHolies. Yeah, this is pretty much. Yeah, 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 this is we can't have. Nice so are, are are we ready to. um To do this, let's do this such as it is let's do this, we shall. All right. I think I have fixed the intro thing where it'll work properly again. Let's see if I was right. I probably wasn't. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And um, so Kanye is back on tour. Did you hear about this? I'm crazy for No. Oh, dear. Be fair, I don't often up on my Kanye. Um, well, he's got an, uh, a tour that's uh, let's what's what's it called? Um, North by Northwest. It, well, apparently it's uh, his, really clever. His single is called Jesus Walks. I thought it was Jesus. Jesus Walks. Well. Jesus. Do you know how with with promoting things, you can just go that one step too far? Yeah, I think this is is. And Kanye usually likes to go that one step and then a couple more. Here we go. Jesus joins Kanye on stage. Kanye. (laughs) Kanye West kicked off his highly anticipated Yeezus tour with a controversial nod to the Almighty, featuring 12 dancing disciples, a red-eyed demon, and a Jesus. A barefoot, white-robed Jesus, wielding a microphone to preach preach the gospel according to Kanye, joined the rapper on stage at Seattle's Key Arena, and Kanye said, White Jesus, is that you? Oh shit, I can't believe it. Wow, they really, really improved that technology. So 
holographic Tupac at Coachella, huh? Oh, God damn. This. Oh, Jesus. Did Jesus rap? Oh, God, I hope not. Because that'd be pretty hot. Oh, like God, Jesus broke out and all like baby got back or some shit. <laughs> no, that's Jonathan Colton, dear. He already did that. Um, Jesus can do whatever he wants. He's Jesus. You have to wonder if there was anybody in Kanye's whole entourage management group that went that for a split second went. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. You know, it's not the Jesus that weirds me out. It's the 12 dancing disciples. <laughs> I, I, Did anyone actually sit Kanye down and explain to him why people might have an issue with this? Just maybe, possibly. I want to know what kind of dance they were doing. You're focused on an entirely different thing here. And if Kanye washed their feet when they were done. Oh. It's just weird. It's like. I mean, I suppose I get what he was going for because he kind of thinks he's Jesus now, apparently. And Jay-Z thinks he's the Holy Grail and they've both kind of lost their fucking minds, but I don't. Jay-Z thinks he's the Holy Grail. Well, I don't think he thinks he is, but his album is called Magna Carta Holy Grail. And that signal is the, the single Holy Grail is the most confusing shit I've ever heard. Have you heard this song? No. It There's opens a- with Justin Timberlake singing like this whiny bad girlfriend song. Like, you treat me so bad, blah, 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 blah. Then Jay-Z starts rapping about how many Alexander Wang suits and watches he's got and how hard it is to be rich and famous. And woe is me, I'm super rich and married to Beyonce. And then all of a sudden, Justin Timberlake comes in and is singing the chorus from Smells Like Teen Spirit. And that's... I. I, I that's when my head exploded listening to that song. So I was just like, you've lost the plot. I have no idea what's going on. And people wonder why I don't listen to the fucking radio anymore. So, I don't want my head to explode. So, I mean, they've both gone a little, you know, gefilte fish, but. Well, let's have another plainly more cut and dried. We sh- this is why we can't have nice things. Um, when's the biggest national park you've ever visited? Oh God, I'm sorry. What? D.A. Scott Jr., Jesus. Yo, Kanye, I'm happy for you, and I'm going to let you finish, but God had the best <laughs> of all time. All <laughs> time. <laughs> That's why he keeps winning the show so often. I'm going to have to have him on as a guest one time when you're, when you're out sometime. Definitely. Uh, um, okay, so this next one is a much more cut and dried. This is what was the, what's the biggest national park you've ever visited? Um, well, I've never been out west to Yosemite. I'm trying to really just no. The only western point I've been to is San Jose, California. Aside from that, the furthest west I've been is Kansas City. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Does Plymouth Rock count? I've I've done some of the Appalachian uh, national ones. They're pretty big. They're and they're the Appalachian Trail. Have you? Not that. Not that one. Not that one. You should mark Sanford. Yeah. Um. But they're very particular about keeping them a certain way, and that's so they can preserve them for future generations, so that everyone gets to enjoy them. Oh, I know where we're going. That's do not get. that's that's the whole. Well, three guys, not only did they not get this, they decided to film themselves doing it. We got video. Three men face felony raps after toppling ancient rock at Utah State Park and (laughs) cheering. Three men, David Hall, uh, Glenn Taylor, and his son, and his son, oh. Well, they were like Boy Scout 
leaders. Oh, they're doing it all wrong. Uh, We're busted for posting video of themselves toppling the brace yourselves for this 200 million year old rock. Goblin Valley State. Which is just bullshit, because as we were just talking about Jesus, I think it's only fair to point out that we all know the world's only 6,000 years old. Let's let's have a uh, let's have a look here at at the. uh, So this is this is what went out over the interwebs. There he is. There's the rock. And he's put he's not just knocking over. He is determined to fuck the and there he goes. And he fucks it up. And they're happy. Well, yeah, because later in the video, they're like, we just saved lives. That rock was going to fall over and kill a kid. In 200 million years, that rock has not fallen over and killed a kid. No, but it fell over and killed their uh, their, their futures. Um, you three tall men could face felony charges for toppling a 200 million year old rock. Um, as they post the video. Oh, well. Damn, it was, it was so awful it crashed Shockwave. I'll be damned. Uh, I've been thinking there's this big hole out in Arizona that I'm going to get a bunch of spackle and fill in because that's really dangerous. Somebody could trip and fall. It's a really big one, too. Yeah, that's really dangerous. It's that's like three miles waiting. wide. Right. That's like a lawsuit waiting to happen. So I think we should just go get some concrete and fill that fucker in. It's public service, really. Emory County attorneys considered charging the bumbling trio, David Hall, Glenn Taylor, and his son, after authorities saw a video on YouTube Wednesday of men destroying the rock at Goblin Valley State Park. The minute-long clip shows Taylor trying to budge the, the boulder at the park with his pal, singing the lyrics to Two in a Room's 1990 hit, Wiggle It. Suddenly, the rock, one of several so-called goblins scattered throughout the park, falls over, and the three Boy Scout leaders erupt into laughter and give each other high fives. Quote, we have modified Goblin Valley. Now I keep picturing them trying to push over the wrestler, The Rock. <laughs> which is a much funnier mental image. The, the funny little footnote to this is apparently the dude who did like the actual rock pushing over mm-hmm. had filed for disability from his job like a week before oh damn he's probably not getting disability now because they're like well you look pretty fit yeah you you just fucked up a national monument i think you're feeling or a, a national park i think you're feeling great yeah so that's the that's the like and that's just the sad little footnote like Maybe it's bad enough that there are people whose job it is when you file a claim, some kind of injury claim. There are people whose job it is to follow you around and catch you like going out to get your paper and being like, look, you can bend over just fine. I don't you don't have to do their job for them. Keep those people employed, for God's sakes. You don't put it up on the Internet. I, I don't know what what's what's making me more confused here. The fact that they look, I know th- the, the whole idea is the parks belong to all of us. That doesn't mean you're allowed to fuck it up. It's not yours. It's oh, for God's sake, it's a metaphor. But not only that, but the filming it part and then the piece de resistance, putting it on the fucking Internet. Do they think they were going to get the Congressional Medal of Honor? (laughs) Because the kid literally says we performed a public service like that was going to hit some kids that did he think like Barack Obama was going to like somebody or somebody was going to hail them as heroes for maybe saving Con- children from the rock that hasn't moved in 200 million years. Maybe Kanye would come by and bless them or something. Maybe. maybe. I, That's like better than the president. It's better than. Yeah. I just Kanye knows Jesus. I'm really just Really? For fuck's sake, of all the things. I have never been to a place in if, if I had gone out in public and fucked something up that didn't explicitly have my name on it, my mama would have the piss out of me. You would have heard me screaming from space. 
But it would be funny if you were at the National Park and there happened to be a rock with your name on it. Would be, yeah. And that doesn't mean I get to put my name on it either. No. No, no, no. Uh, but it would be pretty funny if you just happened upon a rock that was like, Nash, knock me over. There's a Twilight Zone episode in there. Oh, okay. well, of course we can't do this without Florida. It it has to be. It must. Um, we have seen some people with with interesting ideas on how to rob places with what they consider to be foolproof plans. Yeah. Like this, calling ahead. We had the Connecticut dude who called yeah, ahead and was yeah. like, have my money ready for me. I'm going to show up and rob you. Efficient. This one is, um, well, we have to, it doesn't sound so much from the headline. We have to actually get into the story until we find out what the hell happened. But uh, this comes from Melbourne, Florida. Um, Melbourne police nab alleged burglar at Melbourne CVS. And you're like, oh, well, they caught a burglar. Okay. Um, let's have a look at the video, shall we? Because we get, yet again, we got video. Let's, uh, let's bring this up here and let me quickly mute it before it makes noises at us. So let's see here. Um, would be burglar fell from his ceiling hatch escape route into police custody after a break in at Melbourne CVS. Uh, record show officer Matthew Werner was on patrol when he noticed an alarm sounding from the CVS. He called for backup and approached with another officer near the drive through. Werner found a maintenance hatch that was open and an orange ramp placed against the pharmacy window. As the officer got closer, he heard noises inside the hatch. Uh, the noises got louder and began drawing closer. After a few minutes, Werner saw a man appear in the doorway and began climbing out of the hatch. The man fell from the hatch onto the ramp and collapsed to his knees. The officers detained by the man. Uh, the officers detained the man who was wearing a black ski mask, two screwdrivers in his pocket, and a tire iron in his hand. Um, McPride pried open a maintenance hatch, climbed the ceiling, crawled through the ceiling, removed tiles, and came down into the pharmacy. When he got into the pharmacy. The store's alarm went off. He took medicine and climbed up one of the medication racks to get back into the ceiling, damaging the rack in the process. Um, so, yeah. Uh, he sets off the alarm. He doesn't have a lookout. He leaves a large, bright orange ramp as his way in and out of the building. I mean, on one hand, I sympathize because I'm currently uninsured and one month of my prescription cost me 700 bucks. Yeah. So I'm kind of watching this going. Hmm. That. I wonder if I could mission impossible my way into cheap meds. They're all like, Nash said the word hatch. Tara's going to make a lost reference. And I really was going to. It's going to be like, he heard a man in the hatch. He must have <laughs> Yes. Then you kept reading and the moment passed me by. But you had to bring it on back anyway. Of course. But yeah, there is probably a better plan to be had here. Look out! You and your fucking rope. <laughs> oh, I got that. I wonder how many people got that one. But um, yeah, how, I mean, they have alarms. That's how generally, that works. Generally, yes, they do. This and I mean, it's kind of just bad luck that he fell like right in front of the cops. Like, that's just dumb fucking luck that the cop is sitting there like, huh. That seems illegal. <laughs> well, I just. I, he seemed so enamored with the idea of this Mission Impossible shit. That he didn't yeah. consider the practical shit going on. Right. Like that retail establishments generally have an alarm. And that you're going to need to get back out. And I mean, you know, and they also tend to have things like cameras. Although I guess he was smart enough to wear a ski mask and not have to put a fish bucket on his head like someone else. We covered once. But it's like but it's really wanted to be Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible. 
Yeah, he got so enamored with the idea. He didn't stop to think about just having the idea doesn't mean you're done. No. You got There's a stage called development. <laughs> yeah. Usually involves flow charts. And, you know, not getting a rest. You'd like to think, but then we wouldn't have a job. <laughs> and he looks really beat up, too, in this mugshot. Well, you would, too, if you fell the fuck down out of that fucking thing. Yeah, I guess so. <sighs> okay. I, I make frequent use of thrift shops. What about you? I just bought the most, the best coat at a consignment shop in the city. My boyfriend says I look like a Russian mob wife in it. It's this big, <laughs> it's this big faux fur leopard print, like trapeze coat. It's amazing. It was 22 bucks. And I was totally singing that song to myself. But shit, it was 22 bucks. I, I go to thrift shops, too. I find interesting stuff there. I find a lot of props in thrift shops for very, very cheap. And, you know, they're they're kind of a really good deal. But again, this is why we can't have nice things. There are some things the thrift the thrift shop won't take. In this case. From Seattle. The thrift shop will not take your 25 pounds of marijuana. 2.5. 2.5 pounds. Sorry. So that would be impressive. That's still a lot. 2.5 is still that. That's that's a good weekend right there for you and your friends. Seattle, despite the recent legislation of uh, recreational marijuana in Washington, Seattle police, police want to remind everyone that thrift stores can't resell donated bags of pot. Department released a lighthearted press release on Friday. by the public the rules after employees at a thrift store in North Seattle found a large bag of marijuana in the donation bin. I mean... On one hand, that's really generous. No shit. That's a lot. That's 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 very kind of them. You know, like. That probably could have gotten a lot of money or a really good party. That's a lot. That, wow, that's a lot of butt. Yeah, you know, I'm what I'm more amazed at is that they called the police. I know, right? It's Seattle. Party at the thrift shop. I'm amazed anyone thought. Maybe we should call the cops. Or maybe it was just that one guy in the store and everybody from now on is just looking at him like. I know, right? Way to be a buzzkill, Dave. It's always Dave. I mean, yes, I'm a, uh, that stuns me that the cops got called, but I'm trying to figure out what the thought process here was. Do you, you've seen the movie Clueless. Yes. You know, the part where Travis Birkenstock goes on a 12 step program and she's running the charity drive for the Pismo Beach disaster and he brings yes. in all his old bongs. Yes. And she's like kitchenware, I guess. That's where I always kept it. Maybe it's that kind of thing. <laughs> Maybe it's just someone trying to trying to get their shit together and they figure, I think the actual line was, well, you know, I'm not doing it anymore, but why shouldn't anybody else partake? Right. Like. You know, just paying it forward. I I just imagine I imagine them getting, you know, trying to figure out what the retail price is. Put a tag on it. Yeah. Just one of those little Goodwill tags. <laughs> and like, should we sell this as one item? Yeah, get out the little bag. Should we dime it or what? Maybe do little baggies up at the register for an impulse buy. <laughs> Let's see. You've got some old coasters, um, half of a uh, of a, a, a wood burning stove bit here. And uh, would you like a little pot to go with your purchase today? Or if they were really smart, what they would do is do what Ab <laughs> Abercrombie pipes their stinky perfume through the air conditioning unit. Yeah, there you go. Pipe that shit through the vents. You will make so much money that day. You'll be like, dude, look at this. Fucking bitch and dashiki, man. Computer, a computer Rona in the channel. <laughs> Price check on weed. Price <laughs> check on weed. Oh, my God. That's what I say. They should have piped it through the vents. They would have been like sold out of all their stock in two hours. 
Well, Breaking Bad is over, but uh, the legacy lives on. Um, I'm just starting season five. We are, as a nation, much, much, much more educated about meth now than we ever were before, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Yes. But we know a whole lot more about it than we did before. Um, it would be nice if the police would follow suit on that one. Um, police arrest men thinking Jolly Ranchers were crystal meth. A man in New York is now suing the New York Police Department after officers arrested him and his friend back in June thinking they were carrying crystal meth. The trouble is the meth was actually just Jolly Ranchers. Somehow, officers concluded the candy was an illegal substance through a field test that they didn't just look and say, oh, it's meth. They actually pulled out the little testy thingy and tested the Jolly Ranchers and thought it was meth. I'm picturing them crushing them up, <laughs> snoring them and being like, tight, tight, tight. <laughs> this kicks like a mule with his balls wrapped in duct tape. <laughs> And it smells like watermelons. <laughs> it's a special ingredient. Chili powder. Oh. Sugar. The York Daily News first brought the report of the new lawsuit and says the high-tech lab test finally determined the suspicious-looking drugs were really just blue and red pieces of candy. This and why it's they they thought they saw blue Jolly Ranchers. Follow this one, kids. The police, law enforcement, saw blue Jolly Ranchers and thought it was meth. Aren't Jolly Ranchers individually wrapped? <laughs> yes. Well, I suppose it could be argued that someone would take the time to individually wrap each crystal in a Johnny Rapper, Jolly Rancher wrapper. But just it, it. I'm thinking, my thinking here is these idiots watched Breaking Bad and thought that the blue rock-like material must be meth because that's how police work works. And the red? Maybe it was a new flavor. It was, you know, Heisenberg Very. had a new, f Heisenberg had well, you know, he talked about that new formula that wouldn't need any methylamine anymore. Maybe he made it. Oh, my God, it's Eisenberg. <laughs> Xterra, I am not the one who knocks. You assholes. Can you imagine buying a bag of Jolly Ranchers and it's actually all meth? And you don't know until you eat one. Well, you're never sleeping again. Happy Halloween! <laughs> trick or treat! That would be the best trick or treat prank ever. I mean, you'd go to jail for the rest of your life and possibly kill some kids, but nobody would see that shit coming. <laughs> God, Tara Dark! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like, people are checking the candy for razor blades and shit. They are not checking to see if the candy's actually meth. Nobody checks for that. Speaking of kids... I do not endorse doing that at all. We've got we've got one more tonight that um, this is another one. Not only is this is why we can't have night, nice things. This is also why this just keep happening. You remember that uh, story we did a while back about the fight in the Chuck E. Cheese, the parents at the birthday party? Yes. Well, there's a sequel. Oh, good. And, and they up the fucking ante. Two arrested in brawl over prize tickets. Two people arrested after a large brawl at the Chuck E. Cheese restaurant in Lincoln Park. At least 30 people were involved in a brawl, which started among a group of people waiting in line for the Chuck E. Cheese. They said three adults suffered minor injuries. Uh, I saw a couple ladies fighting. They started fighting about tickets from the Chuck E. Cheese, and I saw one lady who was bleeding, says eyewitness Felipe Brito. Two adults were arrested. Um, Shambrea Barfield, 21, was also charged with one misdemeanor count of battery. Travis uh, Trevor Washington was charged with uh, two misdemeanor counts of battery. 
at the fucking Chuck E. Cheese. I haven't been to Chuck E. Cheese in a really long time, but is there anything in that prize case that's worth assault? No, I don't. Like, I remember it being like shitty little rubber toys and cheap stuffed animals. Well, they also put in like one 3DS that's like for a billion fucking tickets because they know no one's ever going to have that many fucking tickets. Right, your kid probably doesn't have all those tickets. So unless you're mugging every other kid in the Chuck E. Cheese for their tickets, I, I really find it hard to believe that there's anything in that case that's worth somebody getting assaulted, somebody bleeding in front of your children. But yeah, I, I actually, I think I know what happened. Somebody stood up in the back and yelled, Mortal Kombat! And nature took its course. 30 people, man. It's happening in a Chuck E. Cheese. Like, you're there to make your kids happy. To let them jump around in the urine-coated ball pit. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're not there to start a fucking... Bro Conduct yourself like a grown-up, goddammit. You're a parent. You're in charge of another tiny little person. Zodiac says, how many tickets for a bandage? <laughs> Now that would be capitalism at its finest. Yeah. Oh yeah, you want a band aid? Go play some skee ball, asshole. Just of all the, uh, of all the fucking. What did DA? Oh god, we have to look at what DA Scott yeah. say. Um, my biggest appointments disappointments is that these fights never occur in the ball pit. That He's right. That <laughs> should be how they handle these things. Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> policy. If you get into a fight, you are in the ball pit. Work it out in there. Two <laughs> men enter, one man leaves. Two men enter, one man leaves. But who can stay angry in a ball pit? That should be their policy. That'd be fantastic. It'd be really effective. Because next thing you know, everybody's just playing in the ball pit. You cannot. <laughs> <play this. laughs> the aforementioned urine coated ball pit. Well, yes. <laughs> I. Why is it? OK, the places that keep oh, what Star just reminded me in way beyond where you're watching. Supernatural does an episode that takes place in a Chuck E. Cheese type place. That Chuck E. Cheese or Chuck E. Cheese type place type place. They don't use the name. They can't. They can't. Yeah, because th this. How many times does Walmart keep popping up on our radar? Does um, what's the other place that keeps popping up on our fucking radar? Pizza places in general. And why do we keep by name? I think this has got to be like the fifth or sixth time by name. We have called out a Chuck E. Cheese. The fuck is going on? It's almost as if. Places where rednecks congregate <laughs> seem to call, have problems. Oh, it wasn't when I was a kid, man. We went to the showbiz pizza and we watched the robot gorilla sing. And well, we yes, you were too afraid to get in a fight with that terrifying yeah, shit. That's, that's the rock of fire explosion. Nobody was starting any shit with the horrifying hell spawn on display there. Uh, but I just it. This is supposed to be a happy place. Happy kids birthday party. Why are you start? And I can understand two people getting into the fight two having a, a dispute. Why was everybody else in this shit? I know, why did it become a dog pile? It's not like it's not the 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 Royal Rumble from fucking WWE. Maybe it was. Maybe it was WWE Day at the Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, that would be an interesting time in the ball pit. Showbiz Pizza had robot gor uh, gorillas. Yes, they did. They had uh, Billy Bob and the Rock of Fire explosion. And you showed video of that one day. Yeah. And I've never been to Showbiz Pizza, but just from that video, I haven't slept a full night since. And pizza gives me flashbacks now. You're going to have to make me pull up a video again. 
<laughs> oh, the rock of fire. It's like the, video, it's like the video from the ring. Like you see that video and then seven days later, you can't eat pizza ever again. It's it's for your kids, people. I know. Be a fucking grown up. And this is the problem is that like it is no longer the case that having children makes is you a sign of being a grown up. No, like it's not. It used to be. And now like just because you've produced something from your loins means nothing because grown ups are children now. You know what I bet was going on while the while the uh, the parents were in there beating the shit out of each other? I just see the kids sit up on the side going, five bucks says my dad wins. <laughs> no, five tickets says my dad wins. You're on. Or just shaking their heads like, this is why we can't take public. <laughs> I should put a leash on him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah, what, what have we learned this week? We've learned that, um, well, apparently, just because you can fuck... Does not mean doesn't make you a grown up. Doesn't make you a grown up. We've learned that the WWE needs to do their next pay per view in a ball pit. <laughs> you know, you said I that, and the first thing shit. is, I I was laughing, but I went, "Hang on, I, I would think, watch that shit." I think I would actually watch a WWE ball pit. Hell yeah! Get John Cena in a ball pit I, trying to be all hardcore. You can't be hardcore in a ball pit. I can't stand, I cannot stand wrestling, but holy crap, I would watch that. I would watch the hell out of that. This is genius. We need to make this happen. We're we, movies in Connecticut. I will drive down there tomorrow and be like, yo, Vince. We are officially claiming copyright on this idea right now, Vince McMahon. You pay us. You pay us the money. The for all its balls. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Professional wrestling is strangely erotic anyway. A little bit, yeah. Um, we've learned that Jesus is down with Kanye in a big way. White Jesus is down with Kanye. Yeah, learn, think before you... Don't. You're but, not supposed but, to take the Lord's name in vain. I'm pretty sure you shouldn't... Put him on stage and give him a mic in your rap show either. The jury is still out on Black <laughs> Jesus. Wait, Lady Gaga has a song, Black Jesus, doesn't she? I think, maybe. So apparently Black Jesus is a Lady Gaga fan. Ironically, White Jesus is a Kanye fan. Really confusing. You know, if we get enough, if we get enough black and white disciples and Jesus, and Jesus we'll have enough for a chess set. Or a big old <laughs> West Side Story dance-off. <laughs> The Dancing Disciples. When you're a Jew, you're a Jew all the way. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to get in so much trouble for that. At least it wasn't me this week. That's usually my job. Yeah. Everyone direct your hate tweets to Nash this week. We've learned just because it's our shared... Children math on Halloween, so... Just because it's our shared national heritage doesn't mean you can fucking break it! Do not go into nature's living room... <laughs> And fucking break shit. That was the equivalent of walking in on Thanksgiving Day and flipping a table, pretty much. <laughs> We've learned that if you were just because you have a really neat idea for a crime, that in and of itself is not where the planning should cease. That's where the snowball starts rolling down the hill. Right. You have to get keep going. There's more to it. It's, you know, <laughs> plan to steal medicine. Profit. You need phase two. Don't listen to the underpants gnomes. Need phase You're two. You're a terrible criminal model. You need phase two. It's really important. We've learned that, you know, it's good to give, but there are limits. Well, you know, just choose your recipients appropriately. And choose, yeah, I just, yeah. It's, you want to donate your weed? That's great. Donate your weed privately. And finally, we have learned that our law enforcement is highly trained by television. (laughs) 
I want to know what clinical tests like that. That I think is the greater story. They have like chemi- little so, chemical kits that test what for field test made a Jolly Rancher come up as meth. What the fuck is in Jolly Ranchers? You know, that actually is the better question. Which which chemical right? in Jolly Rancher came up that popped a positive on a meth test? That's what I want to know, because that's a little concerning. What's in the Jolly Rancher? Why is that rancher so jolly? <laughs> I think now we know. Uh, God. I, I, we're ruining everything. This is why we can't have nice things. Yep. Did you hear the Hemingway <laughs> boar died? Yeah. Our, our, yeah. That's it's a follow sad. up. Our, our friend from an earlier, the, the drunk pig. The drunk wild boar who got went on a bender, got in a fight with a pig, fucked up a fairground and finally passed the fuck out. Got started hit. to fight with a cow. Started to fight with a cow. Yeah, he, he got he hit. Died. He got hit by a car. We got to pour one out for him. For our homie Hemingway big boar. Poor, poor pig. Although here's the great thing. The meat was already beer marinated. Yes. Those were delicious ham steaks. Mm. Uh, one more thing before we wrap up uh, this week. Next week coming is Halloween. And Woo-hoo. we have started a small tradition here of making of notations of the worst fucking costumes on the Internet. So if you would like to share your we'll talk about those next week. And if you would like to get the, your suggestions for those. Share them with us. Send them to Nash at Radio Dead Air dot com and uh, put in the title Worst Halloween Costumes. Put that as your subject line and we'll compile them and we'll have a look at them next week. God and we're not talking home. like bad homemade costumes. No. We're talking like terrible costumes. They're trying to make you pay money for like the sexy SpongeBob. Right. Or, you know, the sexy hamburger. BuzzFeed actually interviewed the guys from Yandy dot com and. They were like, yeah, we try and think of the most random, ridiculous shit and then make it a sexy costume. They openly admitted that. They're like, sexy iracorn. We just want to see if anybody would buy it. Yeah. And someone, I, I, you can guarantee it's the internet. Someone not only bought it, someone fucked in it. Probably. 